Hello and welcome back everyone. We are still live here in Barcelona at OFF Festival and I have Percy, Rob and Ramona here with me. Welcome. Um, these guys are specialists in Project Gemini, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Illustrators. But uh, let's start a little bit. What brings you to OFF? Um, Project Gemini mainly. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we're doing workshops and showing people what's new in Project Gemini and how we use it, what's our workflow. And where about are you based? So people who are here so can I, find I live you? in Hamburg, Germany. No, I mean here at the conference. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> um, we are in... We don't want uh, to send him to your home, <laughs> but... <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here I forgot okay. what, what's the room called. Um, it's not... Do you know? Um, it's next to the main stage. I don't know okay. either. Oh. So next to the main stage, if you want to learn more about Project yeah. Gemini, um, visit the guys here. Mm -hmm. Rob, you are all the way from the US. Yes, and I'm jet lagged. Yeah, yeah I'm very don't sick fall asleep. Right now. <laughs> yeah, so if you hear a snoring noise, yeah. everybody out there, that is me, low key falling asleep. Well, I'm gonna try to stay awake for this. I'm so, excited. So you're also here for the workshops in Project Gemini? Workshops, yeah. Project Gemini, and Adobe Live. So Awesome. And you, Ramona? Yeah. Same. Me too. You're all together at the same booth. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. great. So um, let's talk a little bit about your background. Um, you are all illustrators. When did you start? <coughs> did you study illustration? Or yeah, I'm studying illustration and I work as a freelance illustrator. Uh, I um, like painting analog as well with paint and acrylic and watercolor. So in Project Gemini, we finally have it in digital form. So I'm excited about that. Is that your favorite feature? Yeah, of yeah. course, definitely my favorite. And you? <coughs> um, I don't know how I got started. <laughs> um, my mom said I started when I was three. I never studied it in school. I studied graphic design yeah. instead. And um, just translated what I learned from graphic design over to illustration, which enabled me to work with graphic designers a little bit better. How long ago was that? So long ago. You see the gray hairs? <laughs> I don't want to age okay. myself. Okay. So long ago. Let's not go into detail. And how about you, Ramona? Um, I also have a graphic design background. Mm -hmm. So I did an education in graphic design and started freelancing in 2012. And two years ago, I switched over to do children's illustration. Yeah. That's, it. That's your main business now? Yes. Interesting. So can you show us uh, some of your work? Yeah, of course. Should we start with Percy? Um, yeah, we could. Yeah? Yeah. So this one I drew in Project Gemini. Um, I don't know if the Pro, uh, um, the GoPro can catch yeah, the yeah, illustration. Yeah. It's the hand view. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put it up like this. <laughs> then. Yeah. It's just a study of a cornfield and sunflowers and a cat. Um, did you take a picture before you drew that as an inspiration or you yeah, drew off the it background. out of your hand? Yeah, yeah. I didn't have the cat inside so I had to uh, um, set it myself into it with the cat. But yeah, the cat wasn't there when I took the picture. And how long <laughs> did it take you to draw this? So this was a quite a uh, quick one, I think uh, one and a half hours. Okay, Yeah, that's quick. Mm. How that's about dope. you, Rob? That's dope. Mm -hmm. um, for me, since I was coming to Barcelona mm -hmm. and I specialize in sports illustration. Mm -hmm. I decided to take one of the top <laughs> players for football, FC Barcelona, Lionel Messi, and um, mess around with it, so to speak. So, um, Did you also have a picture as an inspiration? Yes. Um, yeah. I used a picture as a reference and was basically playing around to see if my current workflow still translate over. Mm -hmm. which it does um, and the results are getting there I'm not quite finished yet on it but I think I'm starting something new for this segment how long did it take you to do this I don't know with the jet lag time just <laughs> flew by so, um, so not long you did it somewhere in between your naps yeah in between naps and okay. drooling on my iPad and things of that nature falling asleep <laughs> okay <laughs> How about you, Ramona? So I will do just a little uh, bunny illustration since we just had Easter. And I will play around with the watercolor brushes a little bit. Awesome. Can you yes. show us how they work and what's the difference between normal brushes? The watercolor brushes? Yeah, yeah sure. So we have here the live brushes. Oh, under there. 
and just take this. And they really react um, like really watercolor. Oh, wow. Um, can can we use our GoPro for this? Yeah. Is it long Snap enough? Snap it. Uh, oh, cuticle uh -oh. view. Yeah, I don't think it's long enough. <laughs> can we enough. see that? It, it's already at the Can end of the something? cable. Okay. Okay, we're having some technical problems. Maybe we continue with yours yes. in the meantime until Ramona is sorting out the technical stuff. Yeah, so I'm starting a new um, document. Uh, I did a uh, blue line sketch ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to upload that and then I'm basically going to ink that sketch. What I'm trying to simulate is if you're still working traditionally on paper, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. the digital is still an option for you because all you have to do is snap a shot of your beautiful line work on paper, mm -hmm. bring it in as a photo layer and then work digitally on top of that photo layer. So how do you get started? Um, from here I'm just going to open up a new layer. And I did it wrong, actually. Do you use your finger or do you use the pen? I use the Apple Pencil, but okay. due to jet lag, I don't want to miss because my hand might be a little <laughs> shaky. <laughs> so a larger surfer, I mean, surface area here. <laughs> so I got this marvelous creature that I'm going to have flying through the air. Did you sketch it? Yes, yeah, kind of, sort of. I can't reveal the secret. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to emulate me working on a light box. I didn't mean to open up a new uh, layer, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this layer option. I'm going to drop the opacity down just a little bit, just to mimic working on a light box with the original sketch and putting your regular paper or onion skin paper on top to do your line work. And from that point on, I select my tool, which is going to be the vector brush. It's the third one from the top. Um, select the width that I want to use. I'm going to crank my smoothness up just a little bit. And that blue dot that you're seeing on your screen, everybody, that's just where my Apple Pencil is touching the screen. And I'm going to play with the taper just a little bit more. What does taper do? Taper gives me that nice chisel edge. Ah. So if I drop that taper all the way down to zero, it rounds out, and then I can I morph it and make it go exactly the way. We, now, we also have pressure in here as well. I can control the amount of pressure has on there, mm -hmm. pressing down hard on a pencil or what have you. And we also have your velocity dynamics. Now, this is something that's kind of new to most folks, but with the velocity dynamics, it really relies on the speed in which you're actually making the oh, strokes. Oh, you can test it right in there. Right in the preview menu without That's awesome. doing something destructive to your own work just to test it out. So that way you make sure that you try on the clothes before you leave the store so you won't have to return back to the store to return them, so to speak. So once I have everything selected, I can come in here and I can begin to start doing my line work. So do you draw on the same layer? Um, it's going to automatically create a different layer. The oh, wow. image layer is coming in as a pixel layer. Okay. But as, if you see right here, there's a little symbol right beside it, which is oh, a yeah. circle. And then it lets, that's an indicator to let you know what type of layer that you're working in. Okay. So right now I'm working into a vector layer. And can you I change have, that? Could you draw in pixels as well? I can draw in pixels as well. That's going to be my first brush here at the top. That's a Pixel Brushes, which has many of the Photoshop brushes created by Kyle Webster in there. Um, or I can work in the live brushes, like Rosa was explaining earlier. So there's a lot of options here. There's a lot of things happening. Um, you're getting features within this application that most apps don't have because they're merging both vector and raster together but not necessarily but they're giving you the common workspace which one for example huh which one for example what's your favorite um, my favorite is vector vector. Um, vector all day um, but it's given me a little more courage now that everything is in one app to explore using other type of digital media along with the vectors um, the way that the application works is the application is the house and each one of these types of media has its own room. 
Mm. And that's why the layers separate themselves in order to give you that room. So that way they're not necessarily touching. You know how some people eat, they don't want their food to touch. But they're separate and it's a more non-destruct way to working. Is it, is it easy for people who are used to Photoshop? Yes. Or is it easier for people who are used to Illustrator? Or would you say it's the same? Well, the difference with Illustrator is um, if, you're, if you're used to using Illustrator Draw, many of those features are still there. But with Illustrator, most Illustrators tend to use the pen tool a lot. This mm. is more freehand and organic. Mm. Um, humanistic feel to using vectors in a way that vectors aren't commonly known to be used. Because all in all, vectors are just like little mathematical equations. So when, when you draw this line, does it, and you, you keep on drawing, does it connect the lines or does it create outline strokes? Or what, what is that actually? It, each one of these are paths. So it's one path. It's one path. And does it connect the path when you keep on drawing automatically, it, or you have to it connect does it, it? It does the appearance of connecting paths. But actually, what the application does is it records each path separately. Okay. So when I open this up in Illustrator or Photoshop layer, I mean later, each one of these strokes will have its own separate sub-layer okay. within a subgroup of layer. Can you connect them? Uh, kind of, sort of, but they still will be separate. Okay. But on the app, they're going to play as if they're connected. Like, if I was to erase, it would erase those whole things together. Um, if I was to do a circle and grab the paint bucket, it's going to fill in that whole entire circle, even though that's two separate I things see. together. Okay. So what they did was they took the blob brush from Illustrator and gave it a unique spin within the application itself. So if you're used to using the blob brush, then... This is just like the blob brush on steroids, so to speak. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, how about we let you keep on drawing the turtle um, with our GoPro here so people can actually watch what you're doing and then we continue with Ramona again. Um, problem sorted? Yes. Yes, I okay, so. great. So here's Ramona no, with the Easter Bunny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you can you. show us again uh, the watercolors that you were talking about. Yeah, so I have this little sketch here and like Rob, I will use a light table situation. Um, I have it on top and uh, at multiply and under there I have a new layer where I will use the watercolor brushes. So... Like you see, they really act like real yeah. watercolor. It's so amazing. Wow. And you can even um, decrease the color and then you can paint with only water. Around the edges. Yeah. Wow. And we also have, uh, we have four watercolor brushes now. Four? Yeah. What's and the we difference? We have some splatter, we have a flat watercolor brush, a s uh, soft edges, and one for the details. What's the difference? Ah, okay. Yeah. And so great. You see how it interacts with the water? So it's a little bit as if you have your watercolor mm -hmm. palette with different brushes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow. And can you also um, cut out one, like the, the bunny layer from the layer that you drew? Or um, like yes, subtract? Yeah, it's on or? a different layer. It's just, um, it just a template or yeah, I will draw over it or under it. So can, can you erase it or can you... Um, the watercolor? Yeah, yeah. Can you erase yeah. it so it goes, it's just inside the bunny or how... Oh, would um, I would use this as a background, sort okay. of, and draw the bunny ov over top, top of the uh, watercolor. Do yeah. the colors merge when you draw the bunny on top? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm, no, if I do a second layer, I think not. You can try it. Let's but try I would this. use <laughs> I would use graphite. But we can try it. No, I 
think if it's on a different layer, it doesn't interact. But if I draw on this layer, yeah, it bleeds into oh, each wow. other. So you just select another layer and draw it on top and it yeah. acts as if nothing is yes. behind. Wow. Let's That's cool. This. And the bunny is a photo layer, like his turtle? Um, no, I drew the bunny with a pencil here in the app. Ah, okay. So it's a vector layer? No, it's no? just, I just drew it with a digital pencil. Ah, okay. I don't really use vector for my illustrations. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, and I do children's book illustration, and for that the app is so perfect, because um, a more traditional look is really great for children's book for children's books and that makes it really easy to make it look more traditional. I see. Looks really cool. And it looks like fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> How about you, Percy? How many layers yeah. does your sunflower field have? Uh, it doesn't have that many. I think probably four. Four layers. Yeah, I, I like to keep it everything um, visible. On if one you layer. have a lot of layers, then I have to scroll down and up and just rather focus on the painting and paint on top of everything. So right now I'm it's using the live drawing? oil brushes. I have two characters right here, inspired oh. by circus performers, because I think their attire is really beautiful and uh, colorful. Mm -hmm. So um, I got the sketch. Let me turn off the layers underneath. So I got a really rough sketch to begin. With. So you guys all start with sketches? Yeah, yes. all of you. to That's set the composition and everything else. And, and then I... Do you ever sketch on paper and scan in the paper? Or do you, do well, you go digital to. from the beginning onwards now? But now I Are you so into have it? The iPad, I, and I don't really have to bring paper and scan along with me. I just <laughs> do it, everything on the iPad, so that's more... It's convenient. faster, right? It's, yeah. yeah, it's much more convenient too. It's amazing how things have changed. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the colors? How do you create them? Um, the colors? I'm using the live oil brushes. Mm -hmm. And let me see, let me zoom in. Um, I think the reflection is a bit strong. Uh, okay, this is. Yeah, as you can see, if I use. The color it drags it along the other colors around it, as if I'm using real oil brushes uh, or brushes with oil color wow, on so them. You're drawing with watercolor. He's drawing with oil brushes. Oh. What else is out? What, what mm -hmm. brush is this? This a is normal vector brush. Normal vector brush um, with the chisel applied to it. Are there more than mm -hmm. watercolor, oil, and yours? Um, or there's are a, these the three? There are, there's also the raster brushes, like the pencil that she said she used earlier. Ah, yeah. Um, but there's a whole ton of other brushes and options. You can actually take Photoshop brushes and bring them into this application really? and use them. Yeah. That's and many so of those cool. brushes was created by Adobe's own Kyle Webster. I know you out yeah. there. <laughs> um, I call him the mad scientist of brush. Like he's a wizard. When I love his brushes too. Yeah. I use them as well. Yeah. Amazing, amazing guy, amazing work. Um, but as you can tell, we have three artists who work three different ways. But the similarities is we use sketches as our main foundation, but our workflow are like three totally different animals, but we're able to create within one application. And we all are using different media at the same time, so this is pretty amazing. It is. Do you have a finished artwork that you could show us? and Like in Project Gemini? Um, not quite finished. Um, when do you actually decide that something is finished? That's a great question. Because, because you don't have it in a canvas, you have it digital, so you could basically paint on forever. <laughs> yeah, but that's the case. <laughs> if <laughs> you paint on forever, it, it gets worse. That means you're already finished, yeah. like some time ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I decide when you when it gets worse. You yeah. Then you're probably maybe finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For me, that's I also the cool thing about being digital, right? You press mm. command set, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just right. go back to your original. For me, really I like cool. to go as far as I can go, and then start to take things away and see if it still is effective 
when it had everything on than when I take everything away from it. So that, I mean, that's a question that many artists toil with. We just got a feeling where we just have to stop. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, the work is never done. Never. Never, ever. Do you have something that's half finished? <laughs> um, the messy drawing that I had a yeah. bit earlier is more further along than... How many layers does that have? Uh... I was using it for demo purposes today, so it got another 10 additional layers on it. Okay. But this thing is a, um, this application is a layer monster. Um, is it like Photoshop that you have to name your layers? Or they, because I can't see any names. Yeah, we have the option of naming oh, it. Okay. I still have my layer panel up. Do you name them? Sometimes I clean my room. <laughs> I call it cleaning my room. But oftentimes I, I don't, I don't name them at all but if I was to name them just so that my clients can get a clear understanding of what's where I can go ahead and say that this is the ink layer or outline layer um, I can go back down and name this and name it the sketch layer or I'll put BL for blue line <laughs> how about you do you name your layers no. No? <laughs> There's no time for that. <laughs> and you, Percy? I don't either, no. <laughs> yeah. If it gets too messy, I just... It's different in illustration, right? Mm -hmm. do, do you often share your actual work with someone? Because, I mean, I'm coming from a web and app background, and if I hand mm -hmm. over stuff to developers, I need to name my layers, otherwise they wouldn't understand what it is. Oh. Oh. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, if I share the document and someone has to work with it, then, yeah. Yeah, then I definitely name it. does them. that happen? Like, does someone animate it, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens or from time yeah. to time. Yeah, so they can adjust maybe the color on a different layer and they know where the, uh, the thing is they want to adjust. But it was, if, if I say, if it just gets printed, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't name them. Yeah, no. Because it's not necessary. There's, there's no point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. I have that mm -hmm. with book covers. So yeah. I do the type, I draw the type by hand and have it on a second layer. So Sounds they can great. move it. That's cool. You got really far. Oh. <laughs> Can the guys out there see Ramona's tablet? That's really cool. <laughs> Definitely looks like a bunny. That's good. So how many uh, artworks do you produce in, like, let's say a week? In a week? Um, I would say I use one to two days for an illustration mm -hmm. and for the final illustration. And the sketch, depending on how complex the work is, can take in high, one hive to one day. Yeah. So it really depends on the project. And Where do you get your ideas from? Do, do you get the scripts and then you draw to the script yeah, or you write the stories yourself? That's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but usually I get a manuscript and, okay. and then I have to uh, do the illustrations for that. And I work wi with a whole team, with a designer and an editor. And it's really more teamwork or, yeah, most of the time. So you basically read the book without the pictures. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then That's you come my up. job to yeah. visualize it. And it's really fun. So where do you get your ideas from? Ideas? Yeah. Um, when you read a story. Know. I mean, did you have uh, like a, a project or did you read a book? where there were characters that don't exist and you had to come up with something. Yeah, I mean, so a bunny I is like, if there's a story about a bunny, we all know how a bunny yeah, looks because it's a real sure, thing. Yes. But if there is like a So I a read it, the character. manuscript over and over again and take little notes if I have ideas or if there's a description of the character for a book cover maybe. Mm -hmm. And I brainstorm a lot and do a lot of lists and everything and notes. And then I start sketching and do really, really rough sketches and sketch the story over and over again and until I have so found something, yeah. That's great. How about you? Where do you get your inspirations from? And how did you get into sports illustration? You just like to watch a lot of sport and then you draw it or? <laughs> it's, it's weird. I, I used to watch sports and draw at the same time. And my mission during that time was to refine my process just so I can make myself faster. So I would typically watch baseball. Um, a baseball game can last anywhere from two and a half to three plus hours. And my mission was to have a drawing done by the conclusion of the game, all nine innings. Um, then from there, then I would dial it back and say, hey, I need to have a full drawing or illustration done 
before the seventh inning. Um, since I was watching sports, most of my subject matter I would do would be sports, and as soon as the game concludes, I would throw that illustration up on social media. So a few creatives in the sports industry saw stuff and reached out um, Instagram. It's like, hey, we've got a project that's perfect for you. And I was like, perfect, let me hear about it. Mm -hmm. And most of the work just became sports. Yeah. Can we see your Instagram, some of your stuff? Um, I have my iPad landscape, so it's going to flip it over oh, portrait. Oh, I see. Okay. Like Instagram doesn't have so a landscape mode yet. Let's not do but that. But if it's, if it's delicate enough, I can... Or can we use the laptop? I'm not sure. Guys, can we, can we use the laptop? Uh, yeah, my, my connection is USB-C. Only two? Okay. You can, you can pull mine and... Yeah? Okay, let's try this so you guys see some finished work. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, can can we see can we see um, his Instagram here? <laughs> Thank you. That bunny's looking good. Oh, that bunny is super <laughs> cute. Yeah. It's so nice to see the different drawing styles that you all have, but you all use the same application. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell which application you have used for it. Yeah, I never used vectors because I think they are not that organic before, okay. but now in this app, I think I might try to... But you don't have internet, Is, you know that? Well, we need, we need internet. <laughs> what I Thank can do you. is... Do this real quick. The joy of being live. <laughs> yeah, live is always good. <laughs> oh, I went to the wrong thing. Pokemon? Yeah. You know. Are we catching Pokemon <laughs> now? <laughs> On the live stream. That's Where did be I a end first. up? <laughs> that is going to be a first. <laughs> so if he still has the USB C, I can pull it over. Oh, my internet connection dropped. Your connection dropped? Yeah, internet is a rare thing at conferences. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually roaming because I'm in a different country. <laughs> cool. Can we see Rob's iPad? Yay! Yeah, don't we focus on my it. followers. Thanks. Like, um, <laughs> I don't have big number of followers, but they're cool people. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. Looks like people know you. <laughs> oh no, some do. Um, I got this thing where I break things into threes because I'm the third, so I break all of my work into thirds. What if they ever change it to two? If they ever change it to two, <laughs> then I'm going to have to revert back over. <laughs> We're going to have That's a lot cool. of. A lot of um, widows, like <laughs> two images and then one just sitting there, two images, one. Okay, let's not think about this. <laughs> <laughs> so was this intentional, that you put the hat on top of this upper body? N not necessarily. I wanted to capture the logo within the chest. I see. Um, it just so happens that the next picture up was someone's head, and it's actually the sh shirt that I have on now. Was that a unicorn? Yeah. Where, the, where did that come from? Which sport is the, uh, is the is unicorn in? This is actually my <laughs> pop culture stuff. Yeah. Um, I watch the show Happy. Um, there's a cool dynamic between the imaginary character, which is like animated, and the real life um, actor that's there. So, Do you ever animate your illustrations? I can send them off because of the way that um, Gemini orders the strokes. So I can send it off and... Most of the time when I do send those off to be animated, the animator is making the drawing come to life, like come mm -hmm. together on the screen. Do you direct them? N um, no. They do it technically, themselves? Technically yeah. I do. Um, I set the Thank layers you. up to tell them which layer to do first, second, and third. 
We got our laptop back. So if you wanted to, we could switch to the computer and you can keep on drawing the turtle. Yeah. Yeah? Let's try this. <coughs> Thank you. So where is the unicorn here? Now we can even see it bigger. <laughs> yes. What's the skyline behind? Uh, it's just a line drawing. I, you know, I didn't see that on your iPad, actually. <laughs> but now I can see it on the screen. That's really cool. And do you draw this all from pictures that were taken? Yeah, most of the time. The, ti the, the one thing about sports, they have tighter deadlines than most artwork. So I have to work from photo references. Um, I rarely get the chance to just like go back and do the traditional drawing stage by stage and from the head and things of that nature because everything is boom, boom, boom. We got to have this in a week. We got to have this in two weeks. And where does your stuff usually get published? Um, it's a host of different things. Um, some are video. Others are um, printed, printed um, collateral that's probably used in stadiums. Um, I even done murals on walls really? just by using vectors. Wow. So I can, I can do a... How about clothes? I could think of some fan t-shirts, yeah, stuff like cool. that. Yeah. Um, actually, there's one on there with the Charlotte Hornets that was produced into a t-shirt for their 30th anniversary wow. basketball team. That's cool. What else do we have? Um, Ant-Man and Wasp, that was placed is, on an Xbox. Is that sports? <laughs> That's pop culture. Yeah. <laughs> Ant riding, is that, sp <laughs> is that sports? <laughs> that it, has I a, it, heard of? it has a small following. Looks cool. Is it, but that's one of your personal projects, your fantasy projects, yeah. Yeah, so that's the basketball images, but they were placed what, on What sport is this? That is Mortal Kombat, so that's the sport of survival. Never heard of it. <laughs> Video games. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> I don't know them either. I think I know more children's sports <laughs> than <laughs> <this> stuff. <laughs> really cool. Um, you also have Instagram, right? Yes. Maybe we can take a look through yours as well. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> Completely different style, huh? <laughs> and the first two illustrations are both done in Project Gemini. Both? Yes. And, and this, this one? Is yeah, this two. These As well. two. And the squirrel I repaint uh, during the workshop. Oh, here? Yeah. Wow. So how long did it take you to do that? This run took maybe four or five hours. It was a really quick illustration. I usually take longer for an illustration. How long did it take you? About a day. A day. Usually, yes. So this was just to experiment with the app and try out different pencils and brushes. Yeah. What's usually your format? Is the format uh, uh, like set by the publisher of the book um, already and you just set up your page according to the format? Most or? of the time it is, yeah. but um, sometimes they ask you if you have a preference and you can choose your own, the size that you want yeah. to work on. Yeah. What if they ask you afterwards to change it? <laughs> that, it has not happened yet. Okay, luckily. let's hope it keeps on. <laughs> that, would be, yeah, that would be a lot of work to change all the illustrations. Responsive drawing, <laughs> a new thing here. <laughs> that looks really cool. And this oh, one? Thank you. Yeah, that's the one that I repaint uh, in the workshop. How long did that take? The sketch? Um, two hours. Uh, oh, yeah, one, one to two hours. That's really nice. And this one was also done in Project Gemini? Yes. Yeah. And this was also uh, based on a story or just out mm, of your head? No, out of my head, just having fun. Really cool. I love doing private illustrations. It's 
Yeah. This looks like a sport illustration, huh? <laughs> Rob? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's she's that? Giving, she's giving dog. me some competition in sports illustration <laughs> room. Is that dog running? Yeah. <laughs> did you also do that in Gemini? Um, no. no. I just have it for a few weeks now, and I did oh. this um, during my holiday break. Where, where do you feel you can work faster, in Gemini or your previous um, programs? Um, I think it's the same, because I don't really change my process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, the same. But do you I like you have more options here? Or um, yeah, like I said, it's easier to make it look traditional, mm -hmm. due, uh, to the like hand watercolor drawings. brushes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, but I also like that you can, you can save um, the file as a P PSD file mm -hmm. and open it in Photoshop where I usually work and um, and paint on that in Photoshop more. So that's really great. Awesome. I've done that with the flower illustrations. Which one? The um, top one? The, yes. So I did the main part in Project Gemini and then mm -hmm. I saved it as a PSD file and opened it in Photoshop and finished it there. Awesome. Looks really great. Thank you. I love the transparency that you have in the flower leaves. Yeah, they were done with the watercolor the brush. Oh, really? Yeah. That's the effect that it gets. And I Do you also ever use watercolor brushes? I'm going to experiment more with it now. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen it in your work. Yours is really dense and rich in color, right? Really cool. So let's take a look at Percy's. Oh, I see your sunflower. Yeah, that's the second piece. Really cool. Oh, there's a cat. I have noticed that from the <laughs> side. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have my laptop back. <laughs> yeah, that's the really cat cool. from behind. Um, what I like about digital drawing is um, you can use certain colors that are not possible to exist in real life. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I draw in RGB and switch to CMYK to get prints, the colors always turn out less saturated mm -hmm. because the screen is brightening up the colors and I like the vibrancy of the colors. Do you usually start in RGB or in CMYK? I probably should start in CMYK <laughs> when I know it has to be printed, but yeah, usually I just do it in RGB because, like it's I said, there are freedom. more colors to choose from. Yeah. <coughs> How about you? Me too. Yes. Yeah, you start in RGB? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you have the same problem afterwards with the colors? Um, I usually, when I when I do illustrations for books and, and clients, I hand the illustration over in RGB and they have a designer or a team who will switch it to CMYK. Okay. And they do a really great job at it. Okay. So I don't have a problem with this. <laughs> How about you? RGB first. Um, yeah. The application Adobe Draw that I used to use, it only deals with RGB. But once I export over to Illustrator, I can switch that profile up. And I have some plugins by Stoop. I can adjust the contrast, the brightness, the intensity in there. Awesome. So it'll be it'll be less flat. Great. Um, let's look at another project. This one was inspired by Kabuki Theater, mm -hmm. and I really like the patterns the um, performer have on their clothes, and it's very inspiring to me. So. I use those um, really flowery cool. patterns to uh, put in my artworks too. Oh, you drew too? Yeah. Or is it just a reflection? That's, of the just, uh, that's actually a process video. It's a pro oh, yeah. okay. That's so. It looks so complex. How many layers does the, this one have? Actually not that much because I like to merge everything once okay. the colors and composition is right. So I paint on top of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> By Rob. Uh, Rob has enough. Of yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Rob is taking a nap. <laughs> That's how he sneaks out. <laughs> I think that one has at at the end it had probably ten layers at ten. max. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that doesn't sound no. that crazy. Uh, it looks okay. crazier than yeah. this one is. I did in Project Gemini as well. Wow. So 
I try to emulate the quick uh, painting when I'm drawing with acrylic colors. Uh, yeah, so I like to blend those colors in together with the brush stroke texture. Mm -hmm. so, that's so that's acrylic color. This that's one. Yeah, that's Is the oil brushes. Brush? Oil, oh, the oil, oil brushes. brushes. Yeah, okay. oil acrylic. It has the almost the same effect. Okay. Mm. But they are called oil brushes in Project Gemini. Yeah, they're called oil brushes okay. in Project Gemini. Really cool. Mm. There's another one. Yeah, that's also done. This is done with um, the normal, um, not non-life brushes, the pixel brushes. Looks really yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I can see you. You love colors, right? Yeah, I love That's it. That's why you started yeah. RGB. Yeah, for, for example, <laughs> that that violet color. It can be printed at all. I tried it. It always goes uh, unsaturated and darker. Mm. Do you ever print on clothes? No, 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 no. Just on paper for paper. prints. Paper. Yeah. And digital as well. Do you animate stuff? No, uh, I or don't. Do you get animate. it animated? No, I, no? I tried animating once, but uh, I don't think I can do it because <laughs> it's really. But you could hand really out the work, work to an animator who, who yeah, could animate. Probably. But you, you have never. Gone down that no, route, I, no. I, I've done it once. I uh, had to design a character for a short stop motion animation, mm -hmm. and that character got handed to an animator, and she um, made the puppet cutout animate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Sounds great. Where did you? Where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, a lot or of like things. this one. Uh, this Are these thing, cats? <laughs> this is a cat and a bear, and actually <laughs> designed by a, a friend of mine. Okay. Yeah, he drew this one. Then uh, I had the idea to do it in my style. So we sat down together and did kind of a collaboration. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it really looks like an infinite tool. You can do so much with it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you guys out there follow um, Perry here and Rob and Ramona. How amazing are your profiles? They look so pretty. But how far did you get? I mean, this is... Can we swap to Ramona's iPad? This is amazing. Oh it's like a, a bunny with food now. <laughs> 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 You're really quick in that. Oh, usually I think I'm really slow. <laughs> yeah? So, yeah, so this is... I usually, uh, usually plan out my illustrations much more, mm -hmm. so I plan the colors and the sketch and everything before I do start with the final illustration, and I didn't do this here. Is it possible to okay. change the color after? So if you say, oh, I don't like this orange, could you change it to um, green or something? I could do a new layer over it and switch it to color mode. A color overlay or... Yeah. And okay. Um, then I could take, which color do you want? Green. <laughs> Green, okay. Oh, I have the eraser. Yeah, and then I could change that to green. But you can't create a mask or something and just blend it in. Or duplicate, I think like, in you like you're doing in Photoshop, you know? I think you, you can know? do masks with, uh, with Project Gemini, but I don't really use them. I okay. have a really uh, simple process. So, I don't know, maybe one of them knows about masks. Do you change colors? Um, Sometimes in, in the middle of your work? Uh, in Project Gemini, uh, not yet. I don't think the feature is available just yet. So, um, I'm not doing it right now, but usually when I want to try out a different hue for maybe like a piece of clothing, I play with the slider, the hue slider, and just see what works best for the drawing. Yeah. That mm -hmm. looks really great. Are you connected to anything uh, here? Not. No. <laughs> so I'm maybe we, we connect I'm your other because right I, I really <laughs> want these guys out there to see this. Look um. at this beautiful drawing. I don't think that's the right board. Not the right yeah, no, no, need a light no, it doesn't match. It doesn't fit. So we mm. need the GoPro. This only fits in yours, right? Yeah, that's the older iPad. He needs a lightning. It's lightning. Yeah. Pues, no me estoy aquí, ¿no? 
We can just use the GoPro. And give that to the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me zoom it in and maybe hold it up a little bit more so people yeah. can see it. Can we see that? Yeah. How pretty is that? So this, these oh my are god, the you can even see the structure. So, yeah, that's what This I looks like a real about. stain. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like those are the life brushes. They are wow. kind of magical. How far can you zoom in? Uh, let's see. I think starting right now is getting more Blurry. pixelated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It's not what you can do with a real painting, right? Hmm? I mean, you can't zoom in. A no, real canvas can. is a canvas, right? Yeah. You can look closer and <laughs> further away, but that's about Probably it. But here you can really... Magnifying glass, you could. Yeah. <laughs> Did you also work like that? You zoom in and you, you draw more mm -hmm. detailed stuff and then yeah, you zoom out? Uh, for example, this hand right now, it needs a lot more work than I zoom in and focus on the hand. It's a completely different experience for drawing, isn't it? Because yeah. when you have a canvas, you have a canvas and then yeah. you just have to use like a thinner brush yeah. or something mm -hmm. to get more detail, whereas here you just zoom in. I think you have it's to be really careful too to not make too many details mm -hmm. and get lost in the details <laughs> um, by zooming in. Did you get lost in the details before? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All definitely. the time. I can imagine. <laughs> How about you, Rob? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Do you get lost in details? Do you also zoom in and out all the time rather than changing the thickness of the brush or something like you would do in, in a real painting? Um, fortunately, with the, the new Apple Pencil, um, all I got to do is just double tap. Yeah. I can program it to double tap to zoom in and out. So I can be super close and double tap the Apple Pencil. It'll bring me back to 100%. Double tap it again and it'll bring me right back to the, mm -hmm. the original orientation. It's really cool. Um, as far as that question you had about changing colors. Um, Do you change yours often? Not often, but I have the option of easily doing it because it's all vector. Mm -hmm. um, I can come here on mine. Um, here's an example of that tap gesture. So I have the Apple Pencil here, tap, tap. And I'm at 100%. I can zoom in, tap, tap. Wow. And I can go right back out. So wow. I don't have to pinch zoom all Doesn't the time. Work with mine. Yeah. I can do it. <laughs> well, you know, Apple's <laughs> going to send you one soon. <laughs> um, let's say if I wanted these outlines to have a dark blue appearance, I can go over here, select that navy blue that I want, and as long as these paths are connected, touching each other, I can change them um, by simply going to the bucket tool. Do a long press, it's doing its thing now. And now all those segments that are connected oh, wow. are now blue. Um, to further illustrate that, let's let's get wild and just pick a pink color. And so you can really see the change in this. Oh wow. So I do have that really flexibility fast. with vectors to, to change things up a little bit. That's amazing. We have pretty much come up to time uh, here. Um, it, it was great having you here. It's so amazing to see what uh, great things you're doing with Project Gemini. Um, yeah, definitely follow Ramona, Percy and Rob on Instagram. I love your artwork up there. Um, and if you're here in Barcelona at OFF, uh, come visit them at their workshop booth uh, next to the main stage. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for being here, guys. And coming up next is Rufus with Kim and Aaron talking about artificial intelligence, so stay in. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.